All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about equations of motion for multi-degree of freedom systems. And hopefully by the end of this video, I'll give you a sense of why we idealize the building frame of a structure and how we simplify it so that we can make our analysis process a little bit easier. Go through a quick example on how to write the equations of motion for a two-story building frame. And then at the end of it, I'll just talk about a general approach for coming up with equations of motions for any size or an n story frame. If you're watching this video, you probably have a sense of what a single degree of freedom system is. You're probably familiar with the following model. And this is a, a mass spring and damper system with one degree of freedom because it can only move left to right. So here we'll say this is the resting position right here. And this thing moves left to right. We'll say that's the x coordinate system that we've used to define it. We'll say position as a function of time. And it's got some applied force on the outside of it that's causing this to move P, some forcing function, P of T, I'll call it. It has a mass M, the stiffness of the spring, some constant K, and then the damping parameter C. And using equilibrium, you probably came up with an equation of motion that looks something like this. And you learned that the natural frequency was related here as square root of k over m. And this single degree of freedom system and this differential equation could be used to model a, a water tower like a lollipop or a single story building structure. And really when these single degree of freedom systems were vibrating, they all just took one shape. But in reality, there are many, many degrees of freedom in a structural system and many possible shapes or many shapes that contribute to its display shape during vibration. And so here, if I just took a, a stick, for instance, that was sticking up in the air, this stick could take on or have multiple shapes, as many as the number of degrees of freedom that we think is there. And here, you know, you could break this up into hundreds, millions, maybe an infinite number of degrees, and actually probably an infinite number of degrees of freedom. And so there would be infinite number of shapes. And the first shape might look something like this. The second, something like this. Third, maybe something like this. And so on and so forth. And each of these shapes is called a mode shape or a mode of vibration. Each of them contribute to the total display shape during vibration of this stick that's sticking out of the air right here. So there's some portion of this plus some portion of this, some portion of this plus blah, 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 blah. All those portions weighted together equal the total display shape of the stick during its vibration. And each of these mode shapes, so this might be like the first, second, third mode shape, each of them has its own corresponding natural frequency. And typically, depending on the textbook you look at, you know, we use this, uh, we use a vector to describe the mode shape, and then the natural frequency would be described by a scalar value, which would be like omega n. And here, this would be, this one would be, we would call mode shape one, associated with natural frequency one, mode shape two, frequency two, and so on and so forth. And hopefully, maybe this is calling to you, but this, this is alluding to the classic eigenvalue problem, where you're solving for eigenvalues and eigenvectors associated with a matrix. And that's where we're headed with all this stuff. And here, the natural frequencies represent the eigenvalues and the mode shapes represent the eigenvectors of a matrix that describes the structural system that you're looking at. Now, you may be wondering, why do I even want the mode shapes and natural frequencies of a structural system of any kind? And I'm going to look at this from the perspective of a building. Because knowing that the mode shapes and natural frequencies of a building structure can help us predict the displacements or the positions of different points along a structure, 
We can determine the, the position of every point along the structure. And if we know the displacements or the positions of the different points of the structure due to, let's say, an earthquake or some sort of impact, then we can calculate the strains of the different points on the structure. And then we can use Hooke's Law, Generalized, 3D, whatever, right, to determine stresses. And then we can determine or prevent the structure from failing and really design better.